Hi everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new series in Unreal Engine 5. Today we're going to start work on a arcade kart racer, much like Mario Kart or other games like that. So we're not going to be using the vehicle component that comes with Unreal Engine 5 because we're going to go for a non-simulated feel, go for more arcadey feel. So in this episode, we're going to get started by looking at the suspension and how to set that up for each wheel of your vehicle. So let's jump right in. So we're going to get started with our kart racer by not using the chaos vehicle component that you get in Unreal Engine 5. And this is because we're going for more of an arcadey kart racing experience rather than a more simulated one. We don't need all the bells and whistles that are in there. And to edit it is a lot more work than it needs to be. It's just really not worth it. So we're going to go through the very basics of how to use a physics engine to still create a vehicle uh, character. So first thing we need to do is we need to create our vehicle uh, proxy. And this is going to be a proxy vehicle um, that we want to use to just test things out and get them in the right place so all our vehicles can be relatively the same. So we're going to create a blueprint class and we're going to do a pawn, not a character, not an actor, but a pawn. And this is because we want to control it still. And we'll do BP uh, cart, we'll call it. And open this up. And in the cart here, we're going to have a basic box shape, essentially. And this is going to be our proxy for our vehicle. We'll be changing this vehicle accordingly based upon what shape mesh we want to use for it. Okay. Now, for this, I'm also going to have a collision mesh for it. So I'm going to go to the add here, add a box collision. And I'm going to drag the box collision to be the root of the object. Oh, there we go. And what I want to do is I want to scale the box here be roughly the same size as my visual box here. So this box, we're going to just not scale it, but change the box extent over here as we need to. And I'm just going to offset the cube here to be lower down. So it touches the floor of that. In fact, actually this make that smaller. Cube, we'll bring it back up. There we go. And we'll just change the width of that a little bit. There you go. Doesn't have to be exact, but close enough. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the box collision here a physics object. Not the cube, but the box collision. So on the right hand side, we're going to tick on simulate physics. And we want to go down and make sure that the collision preset here is set to block all. So if I were to put this into the scene, it should just drop to the floor oh, sorry, way over there but yeah there you go so let's possess it so we can get started messing about with that so for our cart here we're going to add a a spring arm to it and attach that spring arm we're going to have a camera And the camera and spring arm, we want to set back a little bit further. So I'm going to change the target arm length here to be a little bit further back. We'll try 600. And we're going to change the offset as well up a little bit too. So I'm going to change that to 50. Maybe 100. Like this. And you want to go in here and make sure the spring arm is set to use the pawn control rotation. So tick that on and hit compile. We then want to tell our cart to be the one that we're using as part of our game mode. So let's go and create our game mode. So in our folder, we're going to right click, create a blueprint class and choose a game mode base. And we'll do game mode cart. Open this up and add in here our uh, player default pawn class to be the cart. And all we've got left to do is tell our world here to use that new game mode. So go to world settings. If you don't see this menu, go to window and you'll see world settings as an option. And but in here, you'll see in here game mode override and we're going to choose our cart game mode. So now we should, when I hit play, spawn in as my box. Cool. Now at the moment, our box is just a box. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. Uh, we need to first of all get it off the ground with sus some suspension. So what suspension is going to do is it's going to ray cast down from each of the wheel locations, which we'll specify in a second. And it's going to work out what kind of compression is working on the vehicle and then apply a, a responding upward force on that wheel. 
okay and it should give us the impression of the vehicle sort of hovering so we go back to our cart here so we're looking at doing obviously four casts down to the ground so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up the locations of each wheel as scene components so let's go scene we'll do f left wheel and we'll put that at the location of the forward left wheel about there this be fr wheel uh, over there so left right um then we want the back left wheel and we'll bring that down left and finally br wheel get those four wheels in there okay now we need to do the cast so we're going to do a function and we'll do a suspension cast and this is going to do cast from a single wheel point to start off with so we're going to drag out our front left wheel and we'll plug that in and get the world location of that wheel location and this will go into a line trace the line trace is pretty simple what it's going to do is line trace down to the ground so that'll be the start point and the end point is the same location but we're going to add to it a z value so it goes down so we do negative 60 and bring that into the end there if I turn and draw debug as well, this will make life a little bit easier here. So do one frame and hit compile. So we have to do this. Now, I want to do this for every wheel. I don't want to make loads of different casts for uh, different types of wheels. So this FL wheel here, I'm going to actually drag out and put into the input pins of my suspension cast. So I delete that. And the target here, I'm going to rename to wheel comp. And this will get the wheels wheels location that I plug into it and go down from there. Then from the line traces out here, we're going to take this out and break it open. And the first thing we're going to do is check whether or not we are a blocking hit. And it can only provide upwards thrust if it is actually compressed against the, the floor. So we'll put that in first of all. Next, we need to work out the distance that it is compressed over. So when it's at a compression of between 0 and 60, that is the length that we've got here. So distance-wise, we're going to get 0 to 60. Now for distance here, we're going to do normalize to range. We go from 0 to 60. But we actually want to flip this around. So when it is 0, that means it's closest and most compressed. Therefore, we want to give that the most strength. So this will not be 0, we want it to be 1. So we're going to do a negative symbol. Put this into the bottom one put one in at top so when this output zero this will output one when this outputs one this output zero okay just reverses it around we then need to apply the force to our body so we're going to go to our box and do add force at location now the location is simple enough that comes from our wheel component so we're going to drag, right click a wheel component in, which is our variable. So it's right at the bottom. There we go. And we're going to get the world location of this. And that's the location there. I'm just going to put this down out of the way. The force, though, is going to be pushing upwards relative to the direction of the line trace. So from the trace start and trace end, we're going to go from trace end and we're going to do direction and do get unit direction. And the two will go to trace start. So it's going backwards on itself. We're going to multiply that by our factor here and then plug this into the force. Now we may need to multiply this by a, a scalar factor to get different strength out of it. But for right now, that should do. Okay, so to recap what's going to happen here, we're going to plug in a wheel component from one of our wheel scene components. That'll get the world location, and then it's going to do a line trace from that location down into the ground 
like here. We are then going to get the range that is hitting the floor and it will be de determining how much compression is on each suspension and it will be compressing upwards back up with the unit direction and applying it to the force of that location. So with that in mind, let's now go back to our event graph and add this to our tick event. So we're going to drag in our suspension cast and the wheel component for the front left wheel. We're going to co copy that and paste it in and do it for the other wheels as well. So that's front left, front right, back left, back right. We'll compile, save that. So we test that out we'll still he see we're hitting the floor. Now, the reason why we're hitting the floor is because we need to give it some momentum, like actual force behind it. And then we've got the force direction, and that's about it, and the strength of it, but we need to give it a multiplier. So on this multiplier down here, we're going to add a pin to it, and we're going to convert it to a float, and we'll do something like 50,000. And see what that looks like. A bit better, but we're still hitting the floor and staying on the floor. So we're just going to need to tweak this number until you get the right sort of sizing that you want. And you can multiply this by like this the the, um, the mass of the object as well if you want to make it so it's variable based upon mass. Um, but we'll keep it fixed to keep all our vehicles e uh, even as possible. So I'm going to try now eighty five thousand and that's not looking too bad. Okay, so we've got some good action there. It's hovering slightly, but you've got this sort of bouncing effect. Now, the reason why we get that bouncing effect is because there's no linear dampening. At the moment, our box here is set to just freely just fall around as much as possible. So with the box selected, go down to the physics options, go to linear dampening, and you want to turn this up. Um, let's try turning up to one and see what that's like for us. So you see it's, it bounces around a lot less, a lot more stable there. But let's try and make it a little bit higher. Let's change it to two. That's not too bad. Okay. But you get this sort of a hover vehicle type effect. And you could use the same thing for hover vehicles if you want. Um, that's totally, totally fine to do. Give it a bit more strength, I think, in the, in the force that's been applied. Let's increase the linear dampening as well. I want it to make it wobble, but not so much here. Let's try it at three. That's looking a lot better. We're liking that a lot. And as you you may notice, sometimes it has a slight turn to it. We're just going to change the angle of dampening as well. We'll knock it up to like three or five. Three, uh, we'll do five on an angle of dampening. We don't want it to turn too much, really. There we go. Cool. Okay, that is our the start of our vehicle and suspension done. Okay, and there's your start. We've now got our suspension working for our game. We now need to make our cart move. So in the next episode, we're going to work on acceleration and braking. You can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.